Transform your home for less with ABC Blind's Spring Inspiration Sale. This is the Pete and Kimber Podcast. Cassie Sainsbury was 22 years old and was caught trying to smuggle 5.8 kilos of or kilos of cocaine out of South America in 2017 into Colombia and was sentenced to six years in one of Colombia's toughest prisons. Uh, but she's been released and her tell-all memoir, Cocaine Cassie, is released today. And so we've got Cassie Sainsbury joining us. Good morning, Cassie. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. This is going to be quite amazing for people to actually read your book and hear the story from your own mouth uninterrupted. What's the thing that you think people are going to be most surprised about learning about you? Poor. <laughs> um, I think, first of all, everything that happens to me within those walls Um I think because I never really opened up about a lot of the situations that I, I had to be in, I, I think that's going to be quite a shock for everyone to see that somebody can endure and, and still come out the other end surviving it. Mm. That's definitely, yeah. <laughs> well, you've had a lot of growth. I mean, it's been a number of years now and you you did you were sentenced to prison, but you were let out early because there was overcrowding in the prison due to COVID. You're probably the only person who was keen that COVID came through. But um, you said originally you didn't go to the police and you were in fear of your life because you were threatened. Possibly over time, your story has changed because you've accepted your role in this and acknowledged that, well, you did agree to do this. But tell us about the fact that you say now that you had fallen in love with somebody and she had talked you into doing this. How did she get you into that situation? So the person that we're speaking about, she came into my life when I was in a very vulnerable state. I... I hated my life. I hated myself. I was living in the closet. I was in a relationship that I did not want to be in, but I felt that I needed to be in it for appearances. And she made me feel that I could open up to her, no judgment. And she actually made me feel like and made hints that she felt the same way about me and that, you know, we could be together. And she played on that for a long time to the point where it became almost a need for me to want her to accept me, to be proud of me, to give me attention, which ultimately led me down. And in the book, I I go into the details of even how I was thinking and how I justified everything that, you know, she'd set me up for along the way. I was still justifying her and saying, well, maybe, maybe she didn't know. (laughs) Maybe, maybe it's not a part of the plan. And where did you meet her? Like, did you meet when you were in Australia or did you only meet when you went over there on your vacation? No, we, we met in Australia. <laughs> we we studied together. Oh, so then you know the person. Did anyone else ever face penalties other than you? No, they didn't. And from what I was aware of, there was a little bit more investigating going on behind the scenes. Um, a particular prosecutor felt that there was a lot more to it than uh, certain authorities wanted it to be allowed. Um, they actually wanted my case to be closed within two months. So, which is all very awkward and interesting at the same time because I was kind of pushed into a certain direction, but nobody else ever paid time or you anything. Say pushed into a certain direction. At the time you had said, look, the person who got me involved in this, all I can say is her name is Wendy and that's all I know. Yeah. Is the truth that you actually know more and you could take that further? I do know a little bit more, but I don't know to the full extent of the whole syndicate, if that makes sense. No, but you could dob her in. Like, you know enough information that they could catch her, but you're choosing not to do that? I actually gave up the details that I had uh, a long time ago. (laughs) Oh, and they haven't pursued that? No. Wow. Okay. Um, now you're, I wish we had more time now. <laughs> I want to know more. Uh, but look, your, your memoir, you've said the proceeds are going to go to kids charities. I'm assuming that's because they're saying you can't profit from a crime. Does that mean you weren't paid for SAS Australia and you won't get anything from the book? So essentially the book, it is proceeds to crime. Um, but I still decided that I wanted the book money to go towards good 
to good. Um, and I wanted it to focus on any vulnerable type of people. So, And it's just something that was really close to me. And I don't think I should be profiting off of off of something like that. I, I personally don't think it. I don't want to. Um, so I'm actually really excited for it to go to charities, which <laughs> people would never have expected that. And, and actually a lot of people have said the comments of, you can't do that, it's proceeds of crime. Um, but the laws were have... changed around that with Chopper Reed. They actually changed some of the laws so that he was able to profit from his artwork and stuff later in life. Oh, so okay. th- there are certain <laughs> things around it, I think, that make it a bit tricky. Yeah, I, I guess I haven't, I haven't even really looked into it. When I was given the opportunity to do the book, I, I instantly said to my partner then, I was like, this money is going to charity. I, I think out of all the people in the world that would deserve to, to use it, I feel that they would be the perfect people because the book's done so good for me to get it out in the open. But mm. I also want you know, that to be good for other people. Now, Cassie, you said you wouldn't wish prison on anybody and I believe you were violated the first night that you were incarcerated. What were the worst things about this prison? I'm sure it's hard to capture. It's really hard to pinpoint a certain <laughs> a certain moment that's the worst. I feel like it's it's being lost. You go into the, that place and you've you've got no sense of direction. You you can't go to the guards for help because they're just as bad as the inmates. The inmates, there's so many gangs in between all of them that you can't even you can't mix into one either. And because I was a foreigner, I instantly stood out and I was the enemy. And I went through many situations where I was confronted with a lot of violence, with violations, with, with, I didn't have any basic human fundamental rights, which obviously being in prison, you don't have full human rights, but you should still have, you know, the basic ones, which we didn't have. Yeah. Wow. Um, Now, Cassie, I know you are now married to your wife, uh, Tatiana, but Did your actions cost you family and friends? I mean, I hear you talking and I go, I understand I've been in a relationship where I've felt manipulated, where I didn't feel myself, where I made some choices, where I had trust issues, things like that. For the people who don't recognise that feeling and haven't experienced it and just think that you were a young person who was trying to benefit, go in and make some money off being a drug mule, has it cost you more deeply with, with the relationships in your life and the people that you are meeting? Uh, um, absolutely it has I obviously I, I don't have a lot of immediate family left that, that speak to me and I, I understand it I this what I did has a huge domino effect on the people around me and obviously it was nothing that I ever intended and I think that's why I don't try to force relationships or anything either now because I'm still going to be in the spotlight <laughs> As much as I don't want to, any little thing can can bring me back into the spotlight, and and I don't want other people having to to suffer consequences merely for having the same last name as me or for being, you know, related to me. So it's definitely cost me a lot more than what people ever realise, and it's been hard. It, it's been really hard because I I I I'm, I don't like hurting people. I don't mean to do it, and yeah, it's just been really really hard. It seems like you've had to have a very big journey through your 20s of growth and understanding and kind of embedding yourself in this. Did you seek therapy? Did you get support? Did they tell you how to move through this so that you can create a life for yourself and, you know, do something that doesn't make you cocaine, Cassie? Um, I did have a little bit of therapy at one point and my, my therapist just said, like, you're okay. <laughs> you you've kind of, in in your own way, have dealt with some of the the gruesome things that you've been through. That has you've you've dealt with it as you're going through it. Which I guess I didn't realize that it, that I'd been doing it. But it makes sense now that that's why I can be okay with speaking about it and sharing sharing it. Because obviously there's moments where I go up and down, and I you know, I'll have bad days, good days. But I, I genuinely want to share the story because I don't want anyone else going through this. I, I know how much it affected my life. It changed me and it changed me as a person. I would hate to see anyone else go through it. 
I think, what do you think would be the case for the people who might have said, if you hadn't have been caught, that you would have done it again? Oh, definitely not. I would never have in my life have dreamt of doing something like this again. Those days are done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, definitely not. Well, not. No, no, no. Cassie, it's it's been great to chat to you. Thank you for giving us your time. I hope that the book gives you a chance to share your side of the story, um, but I absolutely want to know more about <laughs> why nobody else has faced uh, the same backlash or penalties that you have when you have been able to actually provide them with details. Have the cops said anything to you or anyone in the law enforcement said anything about taking it further? Um, no. All I know is that they basically said that it was in the Colombian authorities' hands and Colombia, uh, the authorities that had my case were a little bit dodgy. Okay. Yep. Are you allowed to travel anywhere? Yes, I am. Yeah. But you just probably I, have no intention of traveling back there. Um, I do. My Obviously, my, my wife's from there, so we still have family over there. But we haven't travelled back in a while yet. Okay. Well, Cassie, I wish you all the best. After the book, do you have a plan? Do you know what your job will be, what you'll do? Um, I think after this, I'll go back into my little hidey hole where I've been for the last year. Um, and I just focus on, on life and, and moving forward. That's all I really care about. Great. Thanks so much for your time, Cassie. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks for having me. Transform your home for less with ABC Blinds Spring Inspiration Sale. Save up to 40% off indoor blinds, shop shutters and sheer curtains.